2 minutes and 48 seconds to get to the fucking point. Folks, the greatest lie ever told to all of us is that evolution is a change in allele frequencies in a population over successive generations is scientific fact. Oh. It is a belief. It is a concept that explains how populations diversify. To believe that anyone who literally interprets the Bible is a nut. No, they haven't. They've come to that conclusion because of videos like this. I am not trying to prove the antithesis of the theory of evolution. There isn't an antithesis. However, if you find one, please let me know. And research the topic in more depth with a more open mind. Asks for an open mind and then closes his own by parroting apologists. There is a group of crazy, satanic elitists who have set out with the goal of ruling the world. <laughs> this is why I come here. If your religion contradicts fact, it will only be a matter of time until people stop believing. Espouses that understanding evolution automatically means the negation of a belief in deity. Stem from Darwin. Evolution actually stems from naturalism, or a form thereof. Charles Darwin was a believer in God and a creationist when he proposed evolution by natural selection. It took him 20 years to muster the courage to publish his book because he was terrified of religious backlash. ...to realize that it wasn't so much science that created evolution and the theory thereof, but the worldview of a few, which likely led to its acceptance and popularity. The mechanisms of evolution were discovered by observation, but you don't believe that, so... <laughs> The simplest way to explain this is by defining our terms. Uses three equivocated versions of the definition in order to suit his argument. Preferably ones that eliminate faith without evidence or the involvement of the supernatural. That is crucial to understanding why evolution at its core is a belief and not a science. Read the beak of the finch. Evolution before your very eyes. But I think that you're expecting gummy bears to give birth to dinosaurs. Which proved its possibility still would not be proof of it having occurred. Science does not prove things. It merely finds evidence to support hypotheses. To be able to explain the origin of life. Evolution does not encompass the origins of life. This is not the definition of biological evolution. You need to introduce new information. No. Only creationists say this. Now, common sense suggests that mutations are usually negative things. No, they're mostly neutral. That no instance of mutation making information has ever been confirmed, not even in the tiniest increment. You seem to be expecting that the evolutionary model follows your straw man. It won't, because what you're searching for isn't what the evolutionary model predicts. But they have never found a mutation that resulted in new information being created. Transposable elements do exactly what the graphic on the screen did. Folks, adding brand new information to the genome essentially is evolution. No, that's what you want it to be. So this whole idea of it taking millions or billions of years is literally pulled out of thin air. Lord, it's a miracle! Man up and vanished like a fart in the wind. Now at this point, many of you are probably asking yourselves, what about the fossil record? Anyone who knows anything about evolution knows that the fossil record is very weak evidence. That's why we rely on genetics. But you don't trust that, so... Darwin predicted the fossil record would present a smooth and gradual transition from one kind of organism to another. <gasps> Darwin was wrong about something, therefore everything else he said is wrong. Isaac Newton was discovered to be wrong about something once Einstein came along. Does that mean that everything else he said was false? And Einstein was wrong about quantum theory. And so on and so forth. So... Is a little thing called carbon-14. <sighs> and even dinosaur bone marrow. They were heme compounds, not marrow. Carbon-14 is present in all of these things. Carbon-14 dating has well-known limitations and is not used to date any of those things. This is conclusive proof that everything on Earth is less than 100,000 years old. No, it's conclusive proof that carbon is the most abundant element of life and that when it decays it can be found almost anywhere, which is why it's not used in the way you're saying it is. The funny thing is, fossils are used to date the geological column. 
which is obviously circular reasoning and doesn't make any sense. That's not circular reasoning. That's concordance. Hey, I've seen these before. You got them from Kent Hovind. Okay, I have in front of me some craisins. This is the equivalent of a raisin made from a cranberry. All right, Eric, you get the craisin. <clears throat> Here's a craisin. This one can be attributed to the reservoir effect. An animal that eats fish will also be tainted by the reservoir effect. When dinosaur bones began to surface, which still had soft tissue present in them. No, they didn't. Link in the description. You can look up ancient cultures from all over the world that all depict and write about dinosaurs living side by side with man. Clearly you believe that human beings have only been capable of digging up fossils in the past few centuries. I wonder what would have happened if a primitive man had found one of these things without knowing what it was. Maybe they would have drawn a picture of it? Most notably to some are the Inca stones. Well-known fakes shown to gullible tourists and gullible creationists. I'm sure you have all heard of a little thing called the Loch Ness Monster. Last week, Japanese scientists placed explosive detonators at the bottom of Lake Loch Ness to blow Nessie out of the water. Summon the help of Scotland's local wizards to cast a protective spell over the lake and its local residents and all those who seek the peaceful existence of our underwater ally. Now it's important for me to note that I do not know if these reports are true or not. You get the craisin. <clears throat> Is that fossilization does not necessarily take millions of years. That's petrification, not fossilization. There's been no evidence to date that that foot boot has been fossilized. That is limestone petrification, not fossilization. I'm sure that you have all heard at one point or another during your life that man evolved from ape. No, we are apes. Served as one of many necessary missing links needed to serve as evidence for man evolving from ape. Who told you that that was needed? Genomics shows that you are related to your mother, and your grandmother, and your great-grandmother, and your great-great-grandmother, but the moment that it shows that you're related to other apes, well, then everyone loses their minds! So the thing you have to ask yourself is why are there so many frauds surrounding the evolution theory? Um, people wanted to be famous? Statistically speaking, these genetic mutations that result in the creation of new information are extraordinarily rare. Yeah, I would say they are because that's not what evolution is. They would have to cycle through hundreds, probably more like thousands upon thousands, of generations in order for this genetic fluke to occur. Wait a minute. Yeah, that, that's what it is. In either case, the quote-unquote fossil record should be riddled with these bones. No. Fossilization is rare, and older fossils are even more rare. It's classified as an Australopithecus afarensis, and only consisted of several hundred pieces of bone, representing only about 40% of the skeleton of this supposed missing link. However, many Australopithecines have been found and categorized. Now, Lucy was three feet tall and was obviously a chimpanzee of some kind. You... Guys in your classifications, ape is a family name. Chimps are a species name of a type of ape. The problem is it has been proven that the Neanderthal cannot possibly be a missing link between man and ape. You are right. Neanderthals are not a missing link between the two. What prize does he get? You get the craisin. They also appear to have a 13% larger brain than modern man. The correlation between brain size and intelligence has never been demonstrated. And that is that evolution adamantly and vehemently defies entropy. Or in other words, the second law of thermodynamics. This fundamental law clearly expresses that over time things degrade. Entropy is a principle that measures the amount of available energy to do work within a system. Life itself suspends this, thus slowing its effects down and its consequences. Things become more random, that things decline over time. What you've just defined is the reason for all life to procreate. If entropy worked the way you think it does, a baby would not turn into an adult, hydrolysis wouldn't work, and self-replicating molecules would never ever come into being. A common sense way of looking at this, and something that should be obvious, is that we see species go extinct. They don't come into existence. We aren't seeing an increase, we're actually seeing a decrease. There are more species on the planet now than have ever existed. 
You didn't provide any information supporting these conclusions, so why should I bother debunking them? Quantify evolution as a fact or a certainty. It is a belief and a religious one at that. Someone doesn't know what science is. If you go and look at any video on YouTube that even so much as questions the theory of evolution, and you will find in the comments section a plethora of people attacking the video and the video's creator in a slew of vulgar and grotesque ways, void of any logical basis. Gee, I wonder why. Solely because their worldview is being crumbled. No, it's because they bothered and you're lazy. That the pieces of evidence that they conclude are scientifically proven cannot possibly quantify as evolution. That's because you don't know what it is. That's all done through selective breeding. That has nothing to do with evolution. Watch a creationist closely in the wild. Watch as he becomes so close to understanding what it actually is because he has to begrudgingly admit that small changes can occur over time. To explain this on a graph, I've already explained that evolutionists believe that all forms of life evolve, meaning that they are adding complexity. No nope. problem is that every single one of these microevolution cases that they point to in an attempt to solidify their theory all are the result of recombining already existent information or losing information. This one got it right, and then he loses it immediately. Now my point is that when somebody comes to you and claims that evolution is scientific fact, that person doesn't understand what a fact means in science. The purpose of this video isn't necessarily to convince you one way or the other. Outright lie. Is to entice you to go out and do more research. Which means ask an apologist rather than a person who's actually capable of explaining what evolution is. Make it a little easier for you guys, I've put together a playlist that I will leave in the description of this video that has hours and hours of good information debunking the evolution theory and also explaining what the creationist viewpoint is. Yep, exactly what I thought. Don't go to an evolutionary biologist, people. Watch these old tapes. I have to return some videotapes. Also, explaining what the creationist viewpoint is. False dichotomy. To debunk something is not to explain its antithesis. Last week, Japanese scientists explained place explosive detonators at the bottom of Lake Loch Ness to blow Nessie out of the water. 